If you've mastered pins, then skewers are going to be no problem. What's a skewer? Well, no, it's not that thing you put on the grill in the summertime. That's a skewer, but not in the chess sense. There's going to be no chicken or shrimp today. A skewer in chess is when two pieces are on the same line. Now, how is that different than a pin? Hmm. Well, during a skewer, the opponent's more important piece is in front. In this position, let's take a look at two black pieces that are on the same line. Let's pick out the queen and the king. They're both on the fifth rank. Hi. And if we extend that arrow all the way over, you'll remember from our pin lesson how strong of a move rook to h5 is. Unlike a pin, where the front piece can't move, when there's a skewer, the front piece has to move. The front piece is actually the more important piece. In this position, the king is required to move, that's the rules of chess, and we get the queen behind Ow. the king. Let's try another skewer from our opening position. Let's take a look at the king and the rook. They're on the same diagonal. I'm going to extend my arrow all the way down the board. Is there a diagonal piece that white can put on that diagonal? Hmm. Well, there sure is. The bishop can travel to the Jack. square f3. The king has to move, and when he does, we will get the treasure hiding behind the king. The queen could have also done the trick. She could have traveled to the square h1. That's a skewer of the king and the rook. She could have even traveled to the square g2, which is a super fancy move. Not only are we skewering the king and the rook, we're also making a double attack of the king and the knight. Really fancy combining <gasps> tactics. Let's go back. Were there any other skewers that white could have made? Well, I like the move bishop to b3. Check. That's a pretty good move. The king uh -huh. is in check, and when he moves, we will pick off the knight. Notice black could capture the bishop, but we do have backup in the form of our rook. Yo. One final skewer that I would not advise you to play would be the move queen to a2. Check. Although we are skewering the king and the knight, we're going to lose our queen on the very next turn after queen takes queen. Once again, a skewer is like a pin, except the more important piece is in front, but it's largely the same idea. Let's move on to our next position. Fans of chess movies might recognize the idea. If you've ever seen the movie Searching for Bobby Fischer, the little boy Josh Whiteskin wins in much the same way I'm about to show you. Now, it's Black's move first, even though Josh was white, and Black played the move A5. It looks like a pawn race. Who's going to win? Josh played h4, and the race was on. Here they go. Who's going to get a touchdown first? And Black scores with a queen. It seems like Black should win. Black got his queen first. But the funny thing is, Josh got a queen on the next turn, and he immediately skewered the Black king and the Black queen. Black's king had to move out of the way, and White's queen swooped all the way down and captured Ow. Black's queen, and Black gave up on the very next move. Now, that's not how the game ends in real life, but hey, that's Hollywood for you. Let's move on to one final chess position. I'm going to really challenge you with this one. You have to use your powers of pins and forks to get it right. Now, in our starting position, you might think a move like bishop c4 is a pretty good one because you're kind of pinning the black bishop. It can't travel along this way, but you know what it can do? It can travel this way, and that would just be a bishop for bishop trade. Nothing special there. Instead, what I'd like to do is look at a different first move. So let's back up. Instead of playing bishop c4, we have this amazing move rook takes bishop. Ow. Now we are losing five mm. points for three, but don't worry, there is a method to my madness. Let's say black takes back with his queen. Ow! Now, we have the king and queen on the same diagonal. Our move bishop c4 is suddenly the right move. There's no way that black can save his queen. She is in an absolute pin. She could, of course, capture your bishop. Ow. But when you take back, white has a bunch of extra pawns, and white should go on to win this one. Let's go back again, because you're probably realizing that after rook takes e6, black did not have to take back with his queen. He could have taken back with his king. Ow. But wait a minute, are the king and queen still on the same diagonal? Well, they are, but it's a different diagonal. This time, it extends all the way to h3, and our bishop can just as easily move there. This time, we have a skewer, because the more important piece is in front. In fact, the skewer is even stronger than the pin, 
because when the king moves out of the way and we take the queen, it doesn't even cost us a bishop. So pin and skewer are largely the same thing, but skewer is when the more important piece is in front. Either way, they're both very dynamic tactics that you should add to your arsenal.